How's everybody doing tonight? First and foremost, thank you all so much for coming to my senior recital. Uh, it's still surreal. It hasn't quite hit me yet, even though we just played a tune. Uh, so that first tune was called Coloring Book. And um, Coloring Book's really special to me. Uh, I wrote this tune when I was a freshman. And uh, I was struggling to figure out who I was in contrast from who I was in high school versus who I wanted to be as an adult starting my music career in college. And um, something that I found, and likely a common theme that you will see in this recital, is that I often felt frustrated with uh, feeling as though I had to make music that other people wanted to make instead of the music that I wanted to make. And so one day at like, it had to have been like two, between the hours of like two and four in the morning, uh, I went down to the new practice rooms that were recently renovated in Bruce. And I sat down at the piano and I played the ostinato that plays at the beginning of Coloring Book and I immediately fell in love. And um, come like a few weeks later, um, I ended up scoring everything out, and then I ended up recording it at the beginning of my sophomore year, but it didn't even end up releasing until like April of last year. Uh, so any of you who are subscribed to my YouTube channel and my other social media understand that Sweet Tooth is the first tune that has ever come out, but Coloring Book is the very first tune that I've ever written from start to finish. So it's... It had to go on my senior recital because it paved the way for who I am as a musician and who I am as a human being today. So um, this next tune is called In With The Out Crowd. So at the beginning of the bebop era, uh, musicians like Louis Armstrong didn't really like the idea of bebop. They thought it was atonal, there was too many chord changes, everything was happening too fast, and the harmony was too tall. Um, and there was lots of musicians who were r really apprehensive to accepting the idea of this, like, this like new form of music. Now, uh, something similar happened at the beginning of the hard bop era. People were like, oh, okay, well, uh, and for those of you who don't know, the hard bop era is when um, jazz started going back to its roots. It started focusing more on um, blues and simpler chord progressions, uh, which eventually leads us into the start of the modal period. Anyway, um, so this next tune takes the perspective of a hypothetical person who's playing and finds a sense of belonging in being part of a group of people who are typically considered outsiders. Hence the name In With The Out Crowd. And uh, for this tune, I would like to invite my friend Jack Timmons to play a little bit of trombone with us. So everybody welcome Jack Timmons. I won't talk your ear off any longer. This tune is called In With The Out Crowd.
Thanks so much. So uh, that tune was called In With The Outcrop, just as a reminder. Uh, this next tune is, uh, we're gonna slow it down a bit, but not really, because I don't like ballads. Uh, <laughs> uh, so uh, this next tune has another emotional place in my heart. This recital in general has a common theme of nostalgia. Uh, I played this when I was in high school, and um, I feel like there's a moment where somebody discovers with a passion like this, like doing art in general, where somebody discovers this is what I want to do for the rest of my life. This is incredible. And that moment for me was at a high school jazz band competition where um, I had a flugelhorn feature and I played it with the rest of a big band. It was super cool hearing people stand up after the tune shouting my name was probably one of the coolest moments of my life. That's a little narcissistic now that I said that out loud. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and, um, but uh, when I was thinking about it, I realized this would be a fantastic tune to share kind of an intimate moment between me, the performer, and the audience, because we're not really that different. Uh, so this tune is called Deanne. It was uh, originally written by uh, a composer named Sammy Nestico, who unfortunately had to uh, leave us not too long ago. So this is both um, a love letter to you all for coming and for him, for inspiring me to become a better writer and for helping me discover my passion and what I want to do for the rest of my life. Thank you.
All right. So uh, this next tune is called Speak No Evil. Uh, I'm particularly excited for this tune because, like I said earlier, I often found myself struggling throughout music school in general between music that I wanted to play and music that I had to play. And um, oftentimes I feel as though um, we don't get to, as a jazz student, we don't get to focus as much on the genres of music that jazz has influenced throughout the years. For example, hip hop, neo soul, pop, uh, even other forms of classical music. So this tune is my opportunity to mend both a more popular uh, form of music like hip hop and something more traditional which is near and my dear or near and dear to my heart like jazz. So for this tune I would like to invite both uh, my tenor sax player Anthony Bolden and my trombone player Jack Timmons back to the stage. One more thing before we start. Um, I would like to introduce the band to you all. So uh, first, starting from my left to your right, we have Anthony Bolton on the tenor side. We have to my right, Jack Timmons on the trombone. At the start of this recital, you may have thought it was his recital, but it is in fact mine. Uh, on the keys, Ben Barker. <laughs> Holding it down on both the upright and the electric bass, we have Daniel Davidson. Uh, a lot of this music would sound very boring, maybe not as exciting as it would be without the drummer in the back, Teddy Cook. <laughs> this tune is called Speak No Evil. Thank 
Okay, we may have spoken just a little bit of evil on that tune. Just a little. <laughs> wow. Okay. Well, uh, I guess it's I guess it's that time. So uh, they pre they 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 prepare you for a lot here at school. Something that they don't prepare you to do is to talk about your feelings in front of a lot of people. Uh, <laughs> so. I want to give a few thank yous. Um, and I want to start with, first and foremost, all of the incredible musicians who have helped me throughout the years and the, the ones who have played with me today. Uh, I also want to thank all of you for coming out because I would be way less motivated to play <laughs> without a crowd. Um, I want to thank the professors here at UNT. I want to thank director Rob Parton because um, 
you can't have music school without a jazz, pro or you can't have a jazz program without music school, and you can't have a jazz program without somebody to run it. And uh, unfortunately, Rob Parton isn't here right now to, to watch this, but I want to give him a huge thank you. Um, I'd like to thank my incredible friends, uh, Anthony, <laughs> Annalena, for coming out, Ulysses, Teddy, Emma. <laughs> you all are my closest friends. And if it wasn't for um, all the times where we're screaming the most random things at each other, if we're not having jam sessions until the late night hours, um, just having a laugh about the most random things, uh, or having crazy, deep, philosophical discussions until like four in the morning, uh, helping me become a better person. Um, without all of those things, I wouldn't be where I am today. And for that, I want to thank all of you. I also want to thank uh, my arranging professor, Dr. Oh, well, it's not Dr. Sorry. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Uh, <laughs> Rich DeRosa, everybody give him a hand. Uh, and uh, so we have a couple more tunes, and there's one very important thank you that uh, I would like to give at the end of this. One more, I forgot. Uh, I want to give an incredibly huge shout out and thank you to my coworkers and my good friends, the sound crew up there. Woo! Huge thanks to <laughs> Ermir Bale, Alex, I'm sorry I don't know your last name. I want to give a huge thank you to Austin and Jake and to Dom and to Devin and everybody else down at 149 working the live stream. You guys are incredible. And for that, thank you. Thank you so much. Um, so uh, we're not quite done yet. I have a couple more tunes that I would like to play for you. But I can't do that by myself. So I would like to invite about like 15 of my other friends who were nice enough to help me with this uh, up to the stage. This next tune is called I Thought About You. So this arrangement happened sort of by freak accident. Uh, people leave lots of stuff around the College of Music. For example, remote controls or random cables or staplers or sheet music. And one day after a rehearsal with my band or a jam session, I found what looked like piano sheet music just kind of hanging out uh, and there was a tune there called I Thought About You. And so I grabbed it and I sat down at the piano and then I started playing it. And I was like, that's so cool. I love this tune, it's really pretty. And I would love to do a full band arrangement of it because I started to hear it in my head as I started to play it on the piano. And um, at first it started kind of like an exercise where it was like, how could I construct an arrangement based off of just what's here on the page? but as I fell more in love with the tune, I decided this would be really cool to do for my recital. And uh, so the gears started turning in my arranger brain, and this happened. This tune is called I Thought About You. On this tune, you're going to hear from Chase Shelsey on the alto saxophone. <laughs> and Jonathan Orellana Sanchez on the trumpet. Woo! I'll introduce these guys in a second, but first, I want you all to enjoy I Thought About You.
can we have another hand for those soloists? Jonathan Oriana Sanchez and Chase Chelsea. So before we get on to uh, the last thank yous, I would like to introduce this band because they won't be here for too long. <laughs> so uh, starting with the trumpet section, we have Jonathan Oriana Sanchez on the trumpet. <laughs> Kendall Height on the trumpet. Richie Fowler, playing lead trumpet. <laughs> and Seth Blitzstein holding it down on split. Yeah. <laughs> you heard from him in my small group section. That's Jack Timmons on trombone on the left. <laughs> we have Max Santana, Maximo Santana on lead trombone. a very close and dear friend of mine, Evan DeRagan. <laughs> I call him D, some people call him Demi. We have Demetrius Thornton on bass trombone. <laughs> Starting from the saxes, you heard from him before. You know him, you love him. His name is Anthony Bolden. <laughs> we have Caden Sater playing a little bit of alto sax for you all. <laughs> <laughs> On lead alto, we have Chase Chelsea. <laughs> a name so nice, you can say it twice, Anthony Singer on tenor sax. <laughs> Holding it down on Barry sax, we have Rylan Villarreal. We have a good friend of mine, Ulysses De Leon on the guitar. <laughs> My name is also kind of nice, and luckily this guy shares it with me. You, you heard from him before. Ben Barker on the piano. <laughs> and the keys. <laughs> Daniel Davidson on the bass. <laughs> Another good friend of mine, his name is James Merritt on the drums. So two incredibly important thank yous. Um, so this next tune is called Miss Michael, Maddie, and Me. So uh, I have shared with you all that I've had many a struggle uh, continuing to stay motivated at music school. And one of those frustrations was playing trumpet because um, I play a lot of other instruments. There's a lot that I do. Like how I said, I work in sound. I am a producer. I'm an arranger. I'm a singer. I do all these other things. And trumpet specifically being the main reason why I even go to the school in the first place, uh, I had a strenuous relationship with it. And if it wasn't because of um, my incredible trumpet professor, Professor Rodney Booth, I probably would have quit trumpet playing altogether. And um, this tune was, it comes from his 1997 or 8 album <laughs> entitled uh, Look Over There. And this tune is about a man and his two daughters and both the joys contrasted with the struggles of raising kids. I don't know what that's like. I haven't graduated yet. Uh, <laughs> uh, but I imagine that it's hard. And when I listen to it, I fell in love. It's probably one of my favorite tunes right now. Uh, somebody asked me what my favorite tune was before I started the, the set. Chase, this one. This one's my favorite tune. Um, when I started, when I became an arranging major, I started working with Professor Rich DeRosa. And uh, one day he came up to me after working on this in our lessons, and he said, so what are you thinking about having this done? And I was like, <laughs> um, and he goes, I'll tell you what. We will bring this in to the 3 o'clock lab band if you finish it by X date, and then um, we'll have Rodney Booth play it with them at the syndicate. And I was like, okay, yeah, yeah, let's do it. Um, 
So before we start this tune, first of all, I want everybody to give a huge round of applause for Professor Rodney Booth in the back. I'd like to give one incredibly large thank you, last and not least, my incredible, beautiful parents, uh, Ben Birchfield and Maria Birchfield. Uh, you guys have put up with so much of me being a pain in the rear, being both an artist and an incredibly philosophical person. And without you guys supporting me, I probably wouldn't be a musician at all. So thank you. Thank you so much. So <laughs> I love you too. This tune is both a love letter to my amazing professor Rodney Booth and to my parents. Because like I said before, um, without you supporting everything that I do and without you single-handedly reigniting my passion for my main instrument, I wouldn't be here today giving an arranging recital for the concentration trumpet. This last tune is called Miss Michael, Maddie, and Me. Thank 
Everybody, thank you so much for coming out to my senior recital. It means the absolute world to me. Everybody have a good night. Again, thank you so much. I couldn't have done it without you.